Ambitious advertising executive, Nat, and struggling writer, Josh, fall in love at first sight at a party. Josh, immediately enamored, takes Nat home and kisses her at the door, blocking the way. Although romantic, this startles an old man who just to want to get out of the door, and is angry at the two lovebirds, shouting at them for why they have to do it here. In seven months, Nat and Josh are deeply in love, with a montage of what their relationship looks like, attending wedding parties of their friends, Nat not catching the bride's flowers like traditionally, celebrating New Year's parties, going on a date to a bookshop, and promoting Josh's book by replacing the bestseller in exchange for Josh's book, then going on a gondola boat in Venice. Finally, the day arrives for their wedding. As Nat and Josh exchange vows and I do, the priest suddenly gives a painful cough before pronouncing them. He attempts many times, but his coughing gets the better of him. The priest asks Danny, Josh's best man, to get water. Danny scoops a cup of water from the holy water bowl and gives it to the priest. The priest seems alright, but he pukes it out because it's not water. Finally, the priest is okay and pronounces the couple as husband and wife. Their friends look at them and say they are adorable, but one woman says she'll give it a year, hence the title, which means that they don't think they'll last over a year. The reception happens, and Danny gives the speech, which is very untasteful as he keeps joking about some lewd things, making the guests and couple uncomfortable. Danny also reveals Nat's past love, embarrassing the couple. Naomi knows that Nat hates being the center of attention, and it is making her cringe. This then sets a precedent for how the marriage will go, especially since Josh says that Nat loves being the center of attention, which is contrary to Naomi's understanding of Nat. Josh gives his speech, saying that though it has only been months, and even if there are many differences between them, it does not matter because they are both in love. While Josh is giving a romantic speech about Nat, Danny keeps butting in, making Nat more uncomfortable and cringe. Along with the crowd is Chloe, who is acting mysteriously but claps along. Now, the sweet dance of the couple commences. Josh asks if she is happy, and Nat says she is, but somewhere deep down, she is afraid that Josh will do some crazy novelty dance, which confirms her fear when Danny plays a hyped song and brings a jacket to Josh while Nat is pushed away. Danny and Josh dance away their novelty dance. Naomi is irritated, and Nat is just tolerating it. Danny, though, isn't helping much as every word that comes out of his mouth is a full throttle offense. The last bit of the wedding party involves floating a lantern into the sky. Josh's parents approach them and tell the new couple that the first year of marriage is always difficult, but they reassure them not to worry because they will get over it and still be in love. Josh's parents, proving their love, kiss passionately, making the newlyweds really disgusted. As they leave, the scene shifts to them in the office of a marriage counselor, Linda. They discuss their relationship, confirming their friend's suspicions that their relationship won't last. Linda asks and theorizes about the couple's problems, such as desiring other people. However, Nat says that they are carried away about being in love since the age demands them to. Linda theorizes that Josh might be gay, and she can tell it, but Josh denies it. Linda gives another theory that maybe the problem is in the bedroom, like Josh is being weird. The couple is grossed out, and it is clear that Linda is a terrible counselor. The couple, though, agrees that their problems, like not wanting to be married, exist. They want to work it out as they think the other person is amazing but they realize they have differences that they can't settle. Flashing back to the beginning of their marriage, Nat reflects on how things are going. Her ambitious colleague announces the arrival of a new client, Guy. Later, Josh calls Nat at work on speakerphone and blurts out something embarrassing, causing Nat to cringe. She almost throws the phone away but answers it, interrupting her meeting. Josh, struggling with writer's block, seeks Nat's opinion. After ending the call, Nat returns to work. However, her coworker appears nonchalant and bitter about her boss's new life as a wife, in contrast to Claire's excitement about it. Nat meets Josh for their appointment, and Josh comments on Nat being late, which offends her. They visit a lawyer, who, despite acknowledging their happy union, reminds them of life's brevity, and the possibility of sudden demise, highlighting their mortality. They meet with the lawyer to plan their future in case of unforeseen circumstances, such as fatality or being in a vegetative state. The lawyer discusses various scenarios and decisions they should make, including whether to switch off life support if one of them becomes a vegetable. These discussions gross them out, and the lawyer comments on their unanimous decision to switch each other off, prompting Nat to comment on how depressing it all is. Nat attends their friend's dinner where they discuss the wedding gifts they have received. Danny once again speaks offensively, prompting discomfort among the group. Naomi inquires about the honeymoon. Josh and Nat talk about their trip and mention a conversation they had about what superpower they would choose. However, Danny interrupts, expressing his desire to speak Spanish randomly as his superpower. Naomi's husband humorously remarks that if speaking a foreign language is a superpower, then the rest of Brazil must be superheroes, to which Naomi corrects him that Brazilians speak Portuguese, pointing out that Naomi's husband is somewhat dumb. 
Chloe asks Josh about his choice, which is super strength, and she enthusiastically comments on its usefulness, like opening jars. Nat confirms Josh's choice, but she dismisses the topic as childish. Josh tries to pass it off as a joke, but Nat isn't amused, signaling that the joke is over. Hugh jokingly suggests that it could be grounds for divorce, and Naomi creatively reprimands him. Danny unexpectedly reveals that Chloe and Josh have never officially split up, shocking their friends. Chloe explains that when she left for Africa, they never formally ended their relationship and left it open-ended, which has been four years. Josh claims he told Nat about it, but Nat, though controlling her expression, feels the tension in the air. Danny defends Josh, stating that he hasn't been happy for a while before Nat, and embarrassingly reveals that Josh spends his time playing games and playing with his biological joystick altogether. The friends are disgusted by this, but Danny defends it as a talent. In the kitchen, Chloe and Nat are fixing up and washing dishes. Chloe apologizes and assures Nat that it has been a long time ago and she shouldn't worry. Nat comments on Chloe's flats. Naomi joins in and shares her marriage troubles, waking up and sleeping with a man with strange habits like being noisy and hairy. Hugh demonstrates the exact bad habit that Naomi hates. Nat comments that she might stick to a single biological male joystick and might not be seeing another. Chloe makes an off joke. Nat says that her bedroom life with Josh is amazing. Naomi then breaks the moment, telling them how intimacy changes throughout. Naomi hears that annoying sound from Hugh, calling it the soundtrack of her marriage. Naomi advises Chloe not to get married and tells Nat it's too late for her. Danny goes over to Chloe and sits beside her. Chloe seems uncomfortable being near Danny, especially as Danny keeps closing in further on Chloe. Danny talks to Chloe about Josh and Nat's bedroom life. Chloe is uncomfortable about it. Danny talks lewdly about it, disguising it as a joke and even giving a come on to Chloe, telling her that she is number seven on the list of people Danny would bed. Danny attempts to invite Chloe to go out drinking, but Chloe knows it's a front to get her laid, so she declines. Nat goes to work and fetches coffee at the coffee shop while talking about Guy's company and dad. They continue to talk about Guy, who is American and acts very American. Unknowingly, Guy is in the background overhearing the conversation but not saying anything. The girls continue their theorizing about what kind of person Guy is. Chloe is working with Josh. Chloe suggests a different name from what Nat suggests. Chloe announces that she is dating Charlie. Josh says he does not want Chloe to get hurt. Back at Nat's workplace, Claire announces that Guy Hapar is coming soon and concludes that Guy is handsome. Claire attempts to remove Nat's ring so she can flirt with Guy and get their account. Guy enters the conference room, acting very stereotypically American. Nat starts the presentation, but Guy behaves based on the overheard conversation, especially with the green and yellow font, which might put him off. Not wanting to offend Guy, Nat covers the presentation and makes it old school by writing on a paperboard. Guy acts impressed and shows that he is not a tasteless yank but is actually a very articulate man. Nat apologizes to Guy about the embarrassing bit. Guy says it's okay and that they should do proposals or outside the boardroom to get to know each other. However, as Nat is about to say she is married and being seen with a man is not a good thing, Claire shakes her head, signaling her not to do it. So, to get the account, Nat agrees to go out with Guy. Back at the counselor's office, Nat and Josh are telling their side about why their marriage is not working out, and it sounds a bit on the philosophical side of things. Linda, incompetently, is bored and answers a personal call instead. Now back at their sweet beginnings, their marital problems are starting to arise. Josh is lying around while Nat reminds him of the bin, but Josh does not fulfill it. Later, while their marriage is starting to deteriorate, Guy begins to send sweet gestures to Nat. Nat loses her phone, and Josh isn't helping her find it. To make matters worse, Josh is just watching crazy mindless videos. Not only that, but Josh is also neglecting his share of the household chores, like putting the seat down and not changing the tissue roll. Attending a costume party, Nat is dressed as a cat and Josh is a pea. While singing to Annie Lennox's song, Josh reprimands Nat for never getting the song lyrics right. Nat falls silent and does not think it's very important. Josh continues to state what he wants and seems serious about the correct song lyrics. Nat, though, continues to sing it out loud, ignoring Josh's statements. Back in the counselor's office, Linda is having a fight with her husband over the phone, violently on display with other clients. Guy brings Nat to the plant and shows her around. Guy introduces Janet, who has been working there for 42 years, and Guy jokingly says from his grandfather to him that they exploit Janet. Janet suggests Guy should start a family and settle down. Janet thinks Nat is a good wife material, unlike the last one, but Guy stops her, or else he'll cut her wages. Nat says she is not the marrying type and almost hits a pole for lying. Guy tells Nat how serious he is about the job and how he treats his employees right. Nat goes back to the city on a train ride. It's Christmas season and it's already starting to snow. Nat and Josh prepare themselves for the company party. Nat pleads with Josh to stay because it is just going to bore him. Josh wants to go to support her, but Nat insists Josh stays. She becomes angry when Josh asks if he needs a coat. She tells him that he is very dependent on her. 
Josh follows Nat immediately and attends the company party. Josh later jokes with the rest of the guests about the painting with many metal piercings. Nat tells Josh to go somewhere else to mingle, but Josh stays so he can keep telling the jokes to the guests because he thinks it's funny. Nat doesn't like it. Later on, Chloe is at a very boring dinner and the guests are a bit boring. Guy goes up to Nat. Nat removes her wedding ring. Guy says they should stop talking about business and proceeds to compliment Nat. Guy starts joking around and Nat flirts back. Guy points at Josh who is dancing crazily and says it's embarrassing. Nat does not admit who Josh is and tells Guy to just leave him alone, not acknowledging him as the husband. Josh asks Nat for a dance, but Guy becomes defensive, not allowing Josh to get near Nat. Guy shoes him away, especially when the song comes on. Josh goes away and drops a beat. Guy invites Nat for dinner outside the party, but Nat excuses herself. Back at the Indian dinner, Charlie invites Chloe to bail out. Chloe agrees. Charlie and Chloe start to become intimate when a woman comes to join in. Charlie attempts a three-person party. However, Alexandra and Charlie seem to be getting it on, and Chloe is getting lost in the two-person crowd. Chloe tries to take her own stake from the three-person bedroom party, but Alexandra overpowers Chloe. Chloe then decides to leave them alone, not wanting to participate any longer. Chloe, though, slips out, but she forgets her skirt, which is under them. Nat is pissed and tells Josh to leave. Josh, though, wants to stay as he is having fun. Then later, he overhears his own joke copied by another man and is pissed. Josh is ready to file a copyright infringement. Nat is mad and blares at Josh for his attitude. Back at home, Nat slips out while Josh is in bed. Josh wakes up and answers a call from Chloe. Josh goes to Chloe as Chloe retells how embarrassing it is to be in her position and her experience. Chloe is very stressed that being 32 years old, she is still in a rented apartment, wearing ugly clothes, and seems to be going nowhere. But Josh comforts her, saying that she is going to be fine. Chloe just wants someone to look after her. Josh says he will look after her, but Chloe just says that it's impossible because he is already looking after someone, and that is Nat. Josh figures out what to buy Nat for Christmas. Josh, though, has no idea what Nat wants. Chloe offers to help him pick out Nat's present. Nat goes to Guy's hotel lounge to talk about business, but Nat is curious why Guy wants them to meet there and clarifies that she is not going to Guy's room. Guy affirms that there's no romantic tension between them which actually is not true. Nat continues the business talk, ignoring Guy's flirtatious jokes. Guy has booked a boarding room down the hall and invites her there. Meanwhile, Josh is at a lingerie shop testing the lingerie's fabric quality. The sales staff intervenes and mistakes Chloe as Josh's wife. But Josh is indecisive, so the staff asks Josh what are his turn-ons. Josh tells her, and Chloe listens in. But the sales staff actually means the fabric material. The staff goes to Chloe to ask her thoughts. Josh says Chloe is not a lingerie type of woman and mistakes things that are right about her but are not. Chloe leaves. In the boarding room, Guy leads her there, and Nat continues with the business presentation. But Guy keeps interrupting with romantic cliches like oysters, a violinist, and two doves. Guy starts confessing his feelings to Nat, but Nat drops that she has a husband. Guy is upset because Nat is not saying anything. Nat says that if she flirts with Guy, they'll win the account. Guy says that their flirting won't get too far if she is not happy with her husband. Nat keeps explaining her side while the dove is too close to the fan, distracting her. The dove gets stunned by the fan. Nat explains that she needs to have stability and will choose Josh. Guy, though, says he doesn't care if Nat is married as he is sure that he wants to be with Nat. So, he says he is not giving up. They are about to kiss, but the violinist, trying to catch the dove, separates their faces. Nat runs out of the boarding room. Back at the shop, Josh is still exploring around the underwear. Chloe later gets stuck trying on the brassieres. Josh helps her out and draws the curtain, but then sees Chloe in her underwear and is amazed. Josh gets inside to cover Chloe. Chloe asks if Nat wants something like that. Chloe needs help with the brassiere, but Josh is nervous about it. Chloe and Josh give in to kissing but realize that they are making a huge mistake. They both apologize. Meanwhile, Nat walks along the streets and Guy chases her, apologizing. At the same time, on the same road, Josh and Chloe are walking along the street. Guy spots Josh and names him Beyonce. Nat tells Guy that Beyonce is her husband. Josh spots Nat, so the four meet halfway. They both lie. Nat introduces Chloe to Guy. Josh asks Guy about last night if Guy has hooked up with another girl. But Guy metaphorically says there's a woman she is after but blows him off. Nat just hysterically laughs because she knows it's her. Josh comments on Guy's incredible skin and appearance. All of a sudden, Josh ships Chloe to Guy since they are both American. Guy suggests a double date with the four of them and asks Nat to arrange it. Back at the counselor's office, Nat says that during Christmas, it hits a low point, especially during the family dinner with Josh's family. Nat is very weirded out because Josh's mother is googling if cat urine is good for fertilizer. Nat is not used to Josh's family because they are kind of odd. They are playing charades, and Josh is participating. Josh points at Hugh, but Naomi keeps labeling Hugh with negative terms. Then when Josh points at Nat, Hugh keeps making inappropriate comments about Nat. A funny point arises when Josh wants to say woman. 
but as they don't get it, Josh wants to say lady parts, but Josh ends up pointing at the grandma's lady parts inappropriately. Not only that, but while sleeping, Nat's stepdad puts Josh in the kid's bedroom. However, Nat also says the same that they could not get a good night's sleep at Josh's house because beside them, Josh's parents keep banging the wall. During the exchange gift part, Nat receives a digital photo frame, and Nat's parents give Josh a book titled How to Be a Successful Writer, and stop wasting your life, which is a very personal hit on Josh's struggles. Clearly, Nat's family dislikes Josh, and Josh's family is weird to Nat. Josh continues to talk about the book he is currently writing, but the stepdad is bored with it. The mother is getting a drink for Josh, but the digital frame displayed shows compromising photos of Josh and Nat. Josh is shocked, so he indiscriminately shouts to cover the photo. Josh offers a mince pie to the stepdad to cover the photos. Nat takes the digital frame to show her mom the photos. However, Josh is really worried about the digital frame showing more photos. So Josh creates a diversion. Nat is pissed and tells Josh to calm down. Nat keeps showing their photos. However, as every photo is shown, Josh and Nat's very intimate photos show up on the screen next, and they get quiet and embarrassed. Josh attempts to downplay the situation with jokes. Naomi and Hugh is preparing for a trip where they exchange insults. Nat, though, asks why they are still together when they clearly hate each other. But Naomi comments that part of the marriage is embracing their imperfections and hatred of each other. Naomi and Hugh become genuinely sweet and confess they still love each other. While preparing for their double dinner date, Nat comments on why Josh and Chloe's relationship does not work out. They arrive at the place where Guy is waiting. Guy compliments both of them. Nat and Guy become uncomfortable, but Guy breaks the ice. Nat sells Chloe to Guy so he'll like her. Later on, Chloe arrives, and Josh spots her. Chloe is concerned it is weird. They go for a pool game. Chloe is starting to be close to him as they are both American. Nat and Josh team up. Later on, the topic is about what they will grab when there's a fire. Nat backhandedly compliments that Chloe is not into fashion. While hitting the balls, Josh coaches her on how to properly hit the eight ball. But Nat does not hit it properly and Josh scolds Nat for not doing it properly. Chloe hits the ball properly this time. Josh is a bit anal about the rules playing it. After the date, the Americans win the game. Chloe and Guy's interaction is making both Josh and Nat jealous. Guy and Chloe are close together now, but Nat takes Guy away to talk business and Josh proceeds to drop Chloe. While Guy and Nat are walking awkwardly, she suddenly pushes Guy away and gives him a passionate kiss. Guy indiscriminately rings the bell. Nat is wearing the underwear that Chloe has picked and has worn. The bra falls off while they're passionately kissing. Josh comments that Guy is very bland. Chloe is questioning what is happening. Chloe admits that she still loves Josh. They are still trying to get a taxi but no cabs want to stop for them. However, one stops for an old couple. Josh shouts at the couple for taking the cab, and the old couple allows it. Chloe gets into the cab, but Josh says he just can't walk out of a marriage for her. But Chloe says that they should stop seeing each other, and although she has regrets, she blames Josh for not stopping her. Chloe says goodbye. At home, Nat arrives at Josh's place. Nat decides they need to talk. They now acknowledge the problems in their marriage. Nat doesn't want to end up like Hugh and Naomi and realizes they have different wants in life. They want to make it work, and thus, the reason they have reached Linda's office. Linda, though, gives them advice, but she is still hung up on her own marital problems. Although Linda seems to not be good at her job, she advises the couple to give it a year, that they should commit three months to each other. During the three months, they do things together like jogging, playing charades with the family, and Josh sending cards and flowers. Also, Nat tries to fulfill Josh's bedroom fantasy of a real estate agent roleplay. Josh also tolerates Nat's wrong lyrics, and he finally learns how to empty the bin. They reach their first anniversary. Nat wears the lingerie Josh buys for her. However, the hooks are broken, also because the lingerie is a reminder of Chloe and the night Nat and Guy are kissing. Josh drives away to get to Chloe, however, Chloe is with Guy and they are about to embark on a trip. It seems clear that Chloe and Guy are getting along nicely. Nat arrives at the restaurant party alone and realizes it's a surprise party. Josh plans to run after Chloe. During the ride, Guy and Chloe joke together. At the dinner table, Hugh spits out that they never thought they would make it a year and are surprised it has been a year already. Danny and his big mouth make inappropriate jokes again, which are crude. Danny gives Nat his phone because Josh won't pick up, seeing Nat's caller ID, but when Nat calls Josh, he ignores it. He goes out in the rain and finally arrives at the dinner party. However, Josh is giving a speech about Nat being a perfect wife. He proposes to divorce Nat unexpectedly, and she is very happy about it. Both are ecstatically happy to be divorcing. Although they love each other, they are not in love with each other. Josh wants to chase after Chloe, and Nat nods in agreement. Nat is extremely happy, especially now that she'll never have to endure Danny and his crude jokes. Nat flags down a cab. Later, Guy brings Chloe to the airport for a Paris trip. It becomes evident that both of them are not compatible either. Josh spots them and professes his love for Chloe. Guy shoos him away, reminding him that he is married to Nat. But Josh tells him that he has split up with Nat. Guy's mood changes, especially when Nat is approaching. 
The four arrive together. Josh thinks that Nat is chasing after Josh. Josh now realizes that Nat is in love with Guy. Chloe, though, thinks it is awkward. Nat realizes that Chloe is good for Josh because they both have the same brainwaves. Josh tells Guy that Nat is perfect for him. So, Chloe and Guy politely break up to be with Josh and Nat separately. They exchange kisses with their true loves. They feel it is weird, so they choose separate places where they should kiss from the platform. 